Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webcast on getting started with stock investing. I'm Connie Hill. It's my pleasure to be with you here today. I'm happy that you're joining me as well. Our topic is something that today, I should say, is something that could drastically make a difference in the types of stocks that you might put on your watch list and look to trade and invest in. Stay tuned, I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but it could make a huge difference for you. I am joined in the chat by Lee Bull. Lee's here to help me filter questions. So as you have them, go ahead, chat them in. He may help me out with the question or it might be something I need to answer for you, but feel free to chat those in. And those of you that are listening on the recording, you're gonna have questions too. Uh, I was mentioning to you about questions. If you have questions, chat them in. I'll either catch your question or Lee Bull, who's joining me in the chat, will do so. If you're listening on the recording, chat those into your YouTube comments. I'll go back throughout the week and get your questions answered for you here as well. Now I am on X. I hope you're following me. My handle is Connie Hill CS. Lee does some fun posting as well. You'll want to follow him. He is Lee Bull CS. And uh, just don't miss out on that content. It's very, it's free and it's easy to do. Let's go through some disclosures and get down to business. What we talk about today is for general and educational purposes only. It shouldn't be considered a recommendation of any sort. We will be talking about technical analysis, but there are other approaches, including fundamental analysis that may assert different views. Payment of dividends is not dividend and dividend uh, is not guaranteed and dividends may be discontinued. With a stop limit order, you miss risk, you, you risk missing the market altogether. In a fast moving market, it might be impossible to execute an order at the stop limit price or better. So you might not have the protection that you sought. We'll be talking a little bit about stops here today. Past performance of any security or strategy does not guarantee future results or success. Best in, uh, in the markets involves risk, including the risk of loss. Now, this is a little bit of an overview of our series here because we do go in order and we've gone through all of the top areas here. Last week, we focused on exit signals. I hope you're practicing exit signals. I hope you're building in your plan right from the get-go as far as when you might want to get out of a trade. Today, and the thing that I said would could make be a big difference maker for you is doing top-down analysis and having that element added to what you're looking for the stocks on your watch list that eventually, hopefully, you're going to be trading. What is top-down analysis? All right, you might not know. That might be a new term to you. Let's go ahead. I'm not the best artist in the world, but I am going to draw for you here. A very simple picture. We're going to draw a triangle here. And this represents the market, right? There's a huge number of stocks that we could choose to put in our watch list. But when we're focusing on the top down, essentially what we're saying is, let's go find where the strength in the market is. We don't have to go and chase the whole market, but maybe focus on a section. And so at this very top level, we have different sectors and we talk about the performance of different sectors and sector rotation. All right, so the sectors are up here. The next level down, that is going to be industry groups, right? We could have a, a, a sector, for example, information technology, but we have hardware, we have software, we have cybersecurity, right? There are all these areas underneath information technology where things are subdivided. Again, now there are in some sectors, not all, there are also some sub-industry groups and you can make your searching just that granular. So ultimately, we're going to end up with a smaller selection of stocks to be on our watch list and be very focused instead of trying to grab a smattering from wherever. I'm going to teach you how to do that here today. Now let's go over to let's go over to Thinkorswim here. So we jump over. Up, oh, let's get rid of our triangle. There we go. Uh, let me just show you a couple of tools that we're going to use here today. Now, one tool, I hope you found it. You might not yet have found it, but it is a tool in the market watch. And it kind of shows us the market. Now, I have it selected to the S&P 500. This is showing us at a glance 
the stocks, the their performance today, whether they were up or whether they were down. Anything that's green means it was positive on the day. The darker the green, the higher the uh, movement was of it today. So just kind of looking in here, we can see, oh, here's Pan W. Uh, it was up 5.33% versus let's say Oracle that's a lighter green that wasn't up even quite a percent. But something that you may not have noticed here is that this is divided up into sectors. And so if we come over here, we might say, oh, look at this. This block shows us the information technology stocks. Oh, this block down here shows us communication services. So in a given day, it might be easy to see some patterns, might be easy for you to see, oh, this particular sector is, there's a lot of green on it, or if it's red, it's not doing nearly as well, right? Booking right here was down 10% plus today. So its color is really quite bright red. Now this may be a little too myopic, right? Because we can see the breakdown, we can see them in the sectors, but just looking at one day, you know, might not do the trick, but it is kind of helpful to keep your eye on it on a day to day basis uh, because then you might say, Oh, you know, I've got some stocks in X industry group or X sector. Hey, they seem to be doing good today. Maybe I'll go take a look at those stocks. Now, a tool we're going to use here, probably a little bit more, we are going to be looking at a chart, a basic chart here. And I am going to pull up a watch list that all of you have access to the S&P 500 sector watch list. How do you find it? Just select whatever your watch list is right there. Come down to public. We're going to go down to the lowest public where we see the S's and you would grab this S&P 500 sector indices. Now it'll bring up this list here and I've Close the column down because this is the ticker symbol, all right? That might not be too helpful for us. So I'm going to smash it, kind of collapse it. But there we see the description, which you can add as a column so that you can see, all right, what are the sectors are we dealing with? And then I have some calculations that may put into perspective where sector performance is. Now, I just have two columns selected here. You might want more columns, okay? Uh, the first column here is a one month percent return, and the second column is a three month return. And we can see just by the sectors where the performance is. So I have this selected right now for one month performance. Okay. Which is the best performing sector right now? Well, it looks like in the last month it's been healthcare, followed by consumer discretionary followed by industrials, materials, and then financials, okay? This gives us kind of a short-term view, but it also can help us see as sectors are changing and rotating. Now, I'm gonna sort it by three months, and I want you to notice the differences here. We go to three months, and I have the better ones up on the top. Over the last three months, we're getting communication services, financials, Oh, and information technology. In the one month percent return, information technology was not as prominent, but it is here in a three month. So depending on what time frame you're focusing on, as far as your investing, you know, you might choose different time periods, uh, like a one month performance or a three month performance. You may prefer one over the other. All right. Now, how do we get these little calculations? A lot of you know, especially if you've been uh, joining us for our webcasts, all right? Because there are a little calculation called finger script. Now, I know this is a beginning level class. I know you're not out, in, out there wanting to develop code or anything like that, but these finger scripts are just little calculations that help us, help us see what's going on in the market. And so I'm gonna share with you the one month and the three month. Those of you listening to this on the recording might want to pause and just take a look at what this formula is. So I'll send you three months and one month. Just post it out here. And I need to, anytime I share a script with you, I need to remind you that it's not guaranteed for accuracy or timing. All right, now some of you are like, hey, this is new. I don't even know what I want to do with that, Connie. What you want to do is take the URL. You don't need my description saying this is three months, 
but you can take either the whole URL or just this part of it and copy it into your short-term memory of your computer, come up here to setup, come up here to open shared item, and then you paste in this little formula, okay? It is cap sensitive. It is, uh, it has to be exactly the right same thing, okay? Uh, lowercase numbers, and, and there's, it can be a little tricky if there's an L and a one in one of these, but if you do a copy paste, that seems to just keep you solid there, right? Uh, because you're just grabbing the pure code. After that, hit preview and then give it a name. All right, one month performance, one month percentage change, one month, right, something so you, that you know what you call it. Because then when you're ready for it, you wanna use it, you need to know what you named it so you can pull it up here in your column, okay? So real quickly, that's where that comes from. Now there's some other tools that can be really helpful that I wanna share with you. One of them is kind of plotting. Uh, one of them is kind of showing graphically how each of these sectors are doing. I will share these with you. I will also post everything we're talking about here as far as scripts. I will post in my comments in YouTube for those of you that, that would like to use it, okay? I'm gonna change my chart and we are going to pull up a grid and a grid just means multiple charts. We are going to pull up a grid called Sector Matrix Dark. All right, as I pull this up, you're going to see the screen changes, and I might just kind of get rid of this little piece of it for a minute so that you can see really big. Wow, we have 12 charts here, and guess what? They are all those sectors that we've been talking about. All right, and they have in the box, it tells you what sector it is. So uh, this one happens to be energy, next one materials, and so forth. What is helpful about this matrix is that you can, at a glance, just get an idea, hey, is this sector going flat? Is this sector upward trending, downward trending? Uh, right now, we've been kind of in a nice run in the market, so most of the sectors are upward trending, but they don't have to be that way, right? Some can be up, some can be down. And as I get a quick look at this, I can see, well, real estate down here, bottom center, looks a little flat to me. Utilities right next door, it looks a little flat as well, okay? But from the get-go, you can just have this sitting on your screen. Now, I'm gonna show you something that uh, typically I don't really show you in this class, but today I thought it might be appropriate. I'm gonna teach you several tools to identify sector strength and weakness, and you might wanna use some of them. Now, I'm gonna show you a picture of my computer screen. It wasn't taken today, but it was taken in the past. All right. And what I'm going to show you is I have my little laptop. It's over here in the corner. And then I have it attached to a 43 inch TV. And on the TV, I break out different areas of Thinkorswim. Those of you that are new to Thinkorswim, we've got lots of you, right? People from Schwab haven't used it think or swim for very long, right? You can just basically detach different areas of think or swim. And what do you think I have right smack here in the corner every day is I have that matrix. Uh, I'm looking at other things as well, as you can tell. Uh, and we would already talked about the, the uh, visualize, right? That we could see, hey, how the different sectors and stocks in the sectors were performing. And so you can do that and just kind of utilize these tools to give yourself a feel for, gee, what is going on in the markets right now? So hopefully that's helpful to you. Uh, if you need justification to buy a new TV, maybe I just gave you justification for that. Don't get me in trouble though, all right? Next thing, let's go back to our think or swim here, is, uh, let me get that working. see my uh, computer there we go let's go back to fingers one there we go something else that can be helpful we can see all these 11 12 sectors right broken out in front of us 
we can also compare because we might look at this and go, well, materials looks up, industrials looks up, healthcare looks up. You know, a lot of them look like they're upward trending. Which one is upward trending the most? Okay, so one is using the sector list over here that we started out with. Some people are real visual people. Another thing you can do is you can build it in a chart. Now, I am going to just maximize this cell. And I'm going to bring in a style type. And this style type, I will sell, uh, share with you. I have it called sector lines comparison. All right. What is it showing me? Well, it's graphically showing me for the period of time I am in, which right now I, is three months. Let's go to a year. Started out in a year. All of the sectors start out here at zero. But then we can see over the course of, let's say, uh, there we go, over the course of the year, which ones are trending up, which ones are trending down. So depending on what time frame you're focusing on, this can be really helpful. So say we're looking at a one year point of view. Uh, which sector has performed the best? Well, it's this red line. And you might have a hard time telling, well, is it communication services? Is it that red color? Or is it kind of this reddish brown uh, that's dis discretionary? Uh, this particular one, if you're not sure, what you can do is put your mouse on the line, do a right mouse click, and then it's going to tell you what that is. So that one is pound 50. If we go over to our list over here, we can see all those little groupings. 50 indeed was uh, looked like uh, I've got COM there. Let, let me shrink this up a little. Looks like it is communication services. Okay. So over the last year, that has been the better performing sector. And so you can kind of decide how you want to work it. Maybe you like the numbers, but maybe you need to see it graphically as well. So let's change it from a whole year. Let's bring it out to say three months. And you can do the same thing as far as seeing which ones are performing, which ones really aren't performing. And you can see down here, this one that's the blue, this light blue line. Uh, in the last three months, it is not performing at all. In fact, it's down almost a full percent over the last three months. That's the utilities sector. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to occasionally find better performing stocks in an industry group or a sector that's not doing so well. Sometimes that'll happen, but if we want to, we can focus our efforts on, hey, let's work with the stocks that are in the industries and, and sectors that are performing better right now. There are different market cycles, and as the market cycles through, certain sectors do better than others. And so for our purposes here today, we're going to go off the three-month here. And we are going to focus on communication services, consumer discretionary, and, oh, let me resort it. It's not sorted right. There we go. All right. Communication services, financial, and information technology. Now, if you have questions, go ahead and chat those in. I'm going to share with you, these, those of you that are here with us live, I'm going to share these scripts with you. So this sector comparison chart is this one right here. I'm going to tell you all of the ones that I'm sending to you work in your Schwab Thinkorswim. Some of them may not work in your uh, TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. Those of you that don't have accounts that have transitioned yet, and you're using your TD Ameritrade like you have all these years, This, some of these will work, some of them won't. This particular one will not work, uh, but I'm going to copy it over to you. Uh, so those of you that are on Schwab Thinkorswim have that. So that's our sector comparison chart. And then here's the sector matrix dark. All right, that is the URL for it. Again, I'm going to put it in the chat. Those of you that are listening to this on a recording, maybe pause. I'll do one thing here real quick. I'm going to put it in a text box. That's the first one, which is the sector matrix dark. And then the uh, comparison chart here. Oh, I've got to save OK. And I'll get my comparison chart. I'm going to copy it into that box as well. Put them both right there. All right. So those of you that are on the recording, go ahead, pause, and then you'll be able to 
uh, see what the formula is inside that thing script if you decide it's something you think would be helpful to you. Okay, you've got it. And then of course this one, it's nice because the labels are up here at the top. We don't have to memorize which one was energy or what have you. All right, uh, let me make sure I'm addressing your questions here. I think we're up to date. All right, let's carry on. All right, now that we have an idea how to find what's trending well or which ones are performing well, then what do we do with that information? Okay, uh, I told you to take note here of communication services, financials, and information technology. Now we're gonna go over to the scan tab. We're gonna have some fun there. Now I am going to change my style here uh, because uh, we're not gonna do a comparison chart anymore. And I just want a simple chart. Um, I'll just choose this one. And I'm gonna go out here for about a six month chart. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put something in here because uh, I don't want those formulas in here anymore. Okay, this is simply a 30 day moving average up here with the price and then the volume down here. Now, several weeks ago, when we were talking about the different types of stocks we might wanna focus on, uh, I told you we're gonna focus for several weeks on growth stocks and I taught you a scan. How many of you have that scan or need that scan or might not have been here? You might not have been here, okay? So let's just kind of go over the scan here. Uh, you might be new to Thinkorswim. You might not know uh, the scanning upside and downside, right? You might not be that familiar with it, but we have we have some classes to help you come up to speed on Thinkorswim. I'm gonna tell you, get to getting started with Thinkorswim on Mondays with Cameron May. I believe it's at three Eastern time. And then exploring Thinkorswim is a little bit more intermediate level. And it is on Tuesdays at three Eastern with Brent Moores. They do a great job with that class, walking you through all the functionality so you can get up to speed. We know walking into Thinkorswim is just not a cakewalk, right? We know we had to learn it as well. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, holy cow, I've never traded off of anything so robust or with so many bells and whistles. Uh, and so, yeah, there is a little bit of a learning curve. We're gonna help you with it. Now let's go back to the idea of our scan and what we worked with. We're gonna build it from scratch. Uh, although if you, if you want, you can build it and then save it so that you don't have to build it from scratch again. Now we'll start up here at the top and it starts us with three filters called stock and the, some of the variables from the stock filter. We're gonna use one of them here. We are going to change this. Instead of the net change, we're gonna put in last, and that means the last price of the stock. And we're gonna start it at $10. If you recall, when we go back to our investing plan that we use, we, we tell you, look for stocks that are over $10 so you're not getting involved in really low volume stocks. Now, volume will be something we'll be interested in as well, but this volume refers to today's volume. So we're not gonna use it. In fact, we're not gonna use either of these two fields. So I'm gonna come over to the right, I'm gonna hit X, they're gonna go. And then we're gonna come over here. Let me mark this box out for you where the add filter is over here in the upper right. That's the add filter. And uh, we're gonna select on it. And we're gonna pick some different filters. Now, one of the filters, we're gonna grab actually two fundamental filters here. Remember the fundamentals were quality of the stocks, things that we wanted to see in the stock that you know kind of tell us if it's profitable, if it's making money, if it's growing, those types of things that don't even concern the chart. Okay, so fundamental filters here, a couple we're gonna use. Uh, the first one we're going to do is a price earnings ratio, gives us an idea of how uh, how uh, I don't want to use the term profitable, but maybe efficiency with the profits uh, that a company is. Would we rather throw $20 uh, as far as a PE ratio, $20 into the earnings bank to get a dollar of earnings out? Or would we prefer to put in $100 to get our dollar of earnings out? 
right? So you're thinking about that. You're like, well, I think I like the lower number, okay? So just generally speaking, lower numbers might be more attractive to people, but with growth stocks, they can be pretty wide, okay? Because they're trading on future growths. So we're gonna go a PE ratio that's current and we're gonna do a range here. We're gonna go a range from seven to 80. All right, pretty big range. Uh, sum up a little bit higher, it's okay. And if you're not comfortable with that initially, that's okay. Follow along, you will get used to it. Next one we're gonna choose is going to be return on uh, equity. We wanna see that these companies are actually making a profit. They're making money, right? They have every reason to continue to make money. We're just gonna do the current annual here as well. We're gonna put in something that's, a, a, I'm gonna say fairly aggressive, but it leads us to grow stocks, which is 15%. Now we're going to add some studies from this filter called study. We're gonna add three of these. You need to know study doesn't work in paper money. It gives you an error message. So to build this scan, if you're interested, you have to go to your live side, build the scan, run it, then bring the results over to your paper side so you can experiment with it. So first study we're gonna do here has to do with that volume. We're gonna come down to volume. We're gonna choose average volume. And instead of looking at the last 50 days worth of volume, we're gonna drop that time frame a little bit to 30. And then we're looking for average volume greater, the default to million, and we don't have to be quite that strict. Uh, let's go with 250,000, okay? Don't put any zeros or commas, just the actual number. Now, our investing plan says look for stocks that are in an uptrend. They're making higher highs and higher lows. So we're gonna build this. First one we're gonna put here is we're going to say price performance, and then we're gonna say price change here. And we are looking for price change to be, I have to uh, check my notes here and see how generous I was. Let's go price uh, change here over the last, I'm gonna put 65 periods or 65 bars. We want it to be up at least 15% over that time. Let me get the right numbers here. So we want it to be 50, a 15% higher than it was basically a quarter ago. And then we're gonna focus on short-term trend, right? Uh, we wouldn't necessarily wanna find something that's intermediate trend up, but then already starting to downtrend. So we're gonna build in another price trend here. We're gonna do that price change. And on this, we're not gonna be quite as heavy on it, but we wanna look for a stock that's up at least 5% in the last month. So that'll be uh, 21 trading days, which are what these bars are about. All right, this is the nuts and bolts of what we ran uh, a few weeks ago. If you like it, go ahead and save it, right? Click on this icon to the right of the flame, hit save scan query, give it a good name. Don't call it Connie scan. Connie's gonna teach you a bunch of scans, okay? So make it something a little bit that you'll know what to recognize it. So on mine, I've called it growth stocks class because that's the, the scan I teach you in this class, okay? I know exactly what that means. If I called it Connie scan, I wouldn't have a clue, okay? So give it a name. I'm not gonna save it again. I wanna keep my, my queries nice and clean. Let's see how many we get back. I'm gonna change this to 200. I don't think we're gonna get 200, but we're gonna hit scan. Wow, would you look at that, 192. Now, one of the filters impacting this, and I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna update it, is this volume of the stock. Uh, we don't need it to be tremendously trading. It doesn't need to be an S&P 500 stock or Dow Jones stock, right? Uh, so, but let's adjust this to 500,000, okay? That is going to reduce and slim us down a little bit, and we do wanna be slimmed down. All right, 132 is better. Next, we add the element of our strong sectors. So our first strong sector that we're gonna put in here, we're going to intersect with, 
we're looking in all stocks. We're going to intersect with industry. And the first one we are going to select is communication services. And then if we did want to be down in some of the industry groups, we could bring it to that level. We're not going to go to that level. We want all the industry groups in that sector. So now we're really going to get refined. We're going to hit scan. Whoa, only two stocks out of all those stocks. That's okay. Yeah, whatever number we get back, we get back. Now I'm going to build a little watch list here for us. We're going to say create watch list. I'm going to call this sector strength uh, GTH. And then I'm going to put today's date. We are at the 23rd of February. That helps me know how long ago I made this list. Sometimes uh, we might need to update it. Okay, let's add in here. We have Meta and Google, I believe. Wasn't it Google? No, it was Netflix. Okay, Netflix. I knew it was one of the Magnificent Seven. All right, so we're starting out with those stocks. Let's go ahead and hit save. Let's switch sectors. That was our communication services. Let's go next to, do you remember what it was? I believe it was financials. Let's go to financials. We're gonna grab all the industry groups and financials. We're gonna hit scan. All right, now that's a heftier list there, isn't it? Yeah, we've got what? How many came back? 16 came back that, fill, that fit all this filter. And what we're being really close on, you know, under the microscope are some financial stocks. So let's put them on the watch list. Now, how's the quickest way to do that? Uh, I think what I'd like to do here is I'm going to save it as a separate watch list, okay? I'm going to select on this icon. I'm going to hit Save as Watch List. And I'm going to call this finan Financial Sector. Uh, and again, I'm going to put in the date, 223.24. Uh, if you wanted to put the number at the front, it actually might make it a little bit easier to find. And then what is our last one? Do you guys remember? Was it information technology? I believe it was. Uh, so down to industry, down to information technology. We're going to grab all the industry groups. We're going to hit scan again. And let's see what it comes up with. Usually it comes back pretty quick, just like it did on those others. Not sure why this is being pokey here, but it is. Uh, let me do something. Let me, let me change this. I'm gonna hit clear filter and I'm gonna run it. And then I'm gonna put that intersect in here again. Uh, really shouldn't have been taking as long as it was. All right, let's uh, run it now. Oh, okay, 14. So now we have a list of 14. Now, again, we could add it to this watch list here. If there were like just a few, I might just type them in here, right? And IBM, and I spelled that one wrong. That should be APH. There's a lot of different ways that we could bring it over to a watch list, okay? Uh, suffice it to be that I've showed you a couple of different ways. And ultimately, we want to have one watch list where we're bringing the ticker symbols together. I'm going to go ahead and save this separate here as well. We're going to say save watch list. This one's going to be, I'm just going to call it IT sector. And uh, uh, we'll just leave the caps there, 23, 24. All right, so now we know we've got those three lists. All right then. Well, I went ahead and kind of picked through things. So I always want to show you how to do a trade in every one of our sessions. So let me show you what I picked out from this three searches that we just did and picking some of the symbols from them. Now, before I do that, I have, oh, yes, I want to share this scan with you as well. In fact, I did it before our class started. And here is our scan for growth stocks right there. Again, it's not guaranteed as to accuracy or timing. It's not a recommendation. I think it can be a nice starting point for you, right? As you're trying to figure out what elements you might want on the stocks on your watch list. So let me go ahead. I'm going to post that into that. And just quickly here, I will post it into a text note here with Netflix. 
So those of you on the recording can see, and again, remember these parts right there are the most important, okay? Starting with that capital E. Uh, now this, uh, this one and uh, let's see here. This one actually will work in either version, Thinkorswim TD Ameritrade or Thinkorswim Schwab, either one. Uh, now I'm gonna take a quick break before I show you what we're gonna trade for our trade today. And I wanna encourage you to, if you haven't already, to subscribe to the Trader Talks website. It makes it easier for you to find our content. So if this is what you're looking for, this will be a help to you. Now I'm gonna switch over here real quickly. I'm going to go to the Trader Talks channel. And I wanna suppose that there are some of you that maybe just be stumbling onto this class today. Yes, this class is geared for those of you that are new. And so if you have subscribed to the Trader Talks channel, we have some different playlists for you, okay? Here is the playlist for this particular class, Getting Started with Stock Investing, all right? So you could come back here uh, if you're starting from scratch and go, great, here's number one, let's go to number one, go to number two, number three, and so forth, okay? Uh, today's class is going to be labeled number five, and you can see there's an, uh, an older one here that I did previously. This will kind of take the place of it, all right? So do yourselves a favor, select on that so that you can find what you're interested in. And really, you can put in alerts. So if it's time for the class to appear and you say notify me, yeah, then you get those little reminders, hey, the class you've been waiting for is coming right soon. All right, uh, let's jump back. I wanna show you the stock we're gonna work with that came from our scan here. First ticker symbol here is VSCO. And actually, I'm going to uh, change this back here to the S&C sector indices. This changed a little bit from when I started prep preparing for this class till when we actually got here because this stock comes from the consumer discretionary sector. Okay, we didn't run that in the sector. And you can see it was really close here in terms of performance. And so at the time that I ran it, it was showing that consumer discretionary was actually in the top. And so let's see, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was on the one month performance where I was saying, yeah, let's base it off of that. And in our class, I changed it and said three month performance, okay? Uh, just know that's why this is coming from the consumer discretionary sector. So this is Victoria's Secret retailer you might be familiar with. Uh, what is interesting to me today is, well, we find the stock is in an uptrend. That's nice. Hopefully all the stocks we find are in an uptrend, right? And we save them to that watch list so we can watch for an entry signal. What has happened here recently? We can see this 30-day moving average is starting to head up, right? It was going a little bit sideways for a bit, ran to a new yearly high here. It just kind of pulled back. And as it pulled back, what type of entry do you see that maybe we've talked about in previous classes? Do you see a cahold? A cahold is a close above the high of the low day. In fact, I'm gonna highlight it over here on my scratch pad. And it means in this pullback of the stock, which day went the lowest, looks like just yesterday. We look for the high of yesterday. We can see that's 28.91. And then today, we want to make sure the stock closes higher than that. Now, some people might take this signal maybe before the close of the day. Uh, due to the timing of our class, we're actually getting the end of the day. And we know definitely that the closing price here was 29.47 and it is higher than the high price here of 28.91 so for some people trying to follow that rule this could be a technical entry signal now last week we talked about when could you get out of a trade and plan it from the get-go okay so we're going to incorporate that into this if i back out here uh, there are a couple things that you might consider 
So one might be, where is, is it bouncing off a moving average? Is it bouncing off a support area? Uh, this seemed to be a support area earlier. It didn't bounce off it just recently. It bounced a little bit higher, right, from uh, where this low was here. Somebody could say, well, let's go down below this horizontal support. Or they may say, well, let's go maybe down below maybe the lowest uh, place it's traded in the last 10 or 12 days, okay? Which in that case, where does that put it? Now it kind of puts it right down here. If we look at this, this shadow here, yeah, it puts it down about the same place. When we see uh, an area of support repeated for a horizontal or diagonal or moving average, it gives you idea, the idea that, hey, this is a, a stronger support level because other things are using it. So for that reason, we're going to use 2521, and we're going to go a bit below it. So let's grab our calculator here, and let's go 2521 times 0.97. That gets us 3% below. That gives us some wiggle room. So that uh, would kind of put it in this area here. If it really went there, yeah, it would be making a lower low. And so we'd say, yeah, let's get us out of the trade. Now we're going to use our scratch pad here. And so I'm going to say our stop is at 24.45. Okay. Now let's incorporate our buying rules. Okay. This is our exit rule that we talked about yesterday. If it breaks support, we want to be out. It's not doing us any favors. And so to define our risk, we're going to have to say, well, what, how much are we taking uh, on per share? So let's go with, uh, clear this out, and we'll go 24.45 minus the current price of the stock. Oh, but it didn't go there. We'll go 29.47 minus 24.45. That gives us about $5.02 of risk per share. Now, we've decided in our class account, we do not want to risk more than $750 per trade for our class account. So let's take our $750. We're going to divide that by the risk per share, which is 502 That says we could buy 149 shares. We wouldn't want to buy more than that. Okay, so let's go do it and put it all together here. Right mouse click, buy custom with the stop, and we'll put it in here together. Instead of 100 shares, we're going to say 149. Get our stop synced up to that. We've already determined our stop price is going to be 24.45. We'll make that a good till canceled. If it gets that low, it's going to trigger that market order. So the price isn't guaranteed, but we want it to get us out as quickly as it can. And uh, we've got that good till canceled. We're going to queue this up. We're going to send it in. We're going to put it in our class account because we come back and use those occasionally. So we'll put it in our getting started with stock investing class. Let's send that on. All right. As I mentioned right at the beginning, looking from the top down and focusing on the stronger sectors and the stronger stocks in that sector can really make a difference on what stocks you're going to be focusing on in your watch list. Now, how many of you feel like, I want you to chat this into me, how many of you feel like you could go back, create the scan that we did, or import the scan, because I shared it with you, and, and run that process, and now start look for, looking for entry signals so you can paper trade them in your account? I hope you can say yes. If not, perhaps maybe go back, review the session once it's posted to the website. Now, my time is up. Uh, Tina says, is there another class I need to take in conjunction with this one? Uh, let me tell you my thought on that, Tina, would be as you start to incorporate the things that we're talking about in this class, two classes you might consider. One would be getting started with Thinkorswim, if the Thinkorswim platform is new to you, and getting started with technical analysis. We do basic technical analysis in here, but the, the getting started with technical analysis is definitely going to bring you a lot of additional skills beyond support, resistance, trend, uh, those types of things. Okay, so I think that would be very helpful. All right, our focus was on that top-down analysis and the tools to do it. And 
showing you a scan so we could focus just on the stocks that are looking like they're quite in strong sectors that are performing right now. All right, everyone, our class is over. I did not see a survey, so you're off the hook about filling out the survey. But if you haven't subscribed to become a subscriber, uh, also have a great weekend. We'll see you next Monday when we start back up with our classes. Oh, let me get my last slide here. There we go. We'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.